Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Before Christmas, the first Christmas card that I got was from one of our regulars in the cafe, Alec. And he's one of the folks that uses our gifted soup and coffee scheme. So you know by that, he's not really got money. Uh, he handed me the, the Christmas card, little square white envelope. And he said to me, open it, there's something inside. And I knew what was coming. And I opened it carefully and pulled out the card and inside was a five pound note. And he said, make sure you buy yourself something nice with that. Don't put it in the church collection. And then I'm left with the question, how, how do I honor the fact that someone who is poor has just given me money? What I decided to do was buy a paintbrush with that five pounds and then painted Alec and he became the subject of this painting. Chapter 11 of Luke's Gospel starts off with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, that was the, the first bit of the Bible that I really knew about. Um, I, I never uh, went to church when I was little. Um, I was probably, I think I was 15 when I became a Christian. Um, but in primary school, at school assemblies, we all learned the Lord's Prayer. And even now, if you ask me to recite the Lord's Prayer, I would do it in the version that I, I learned uh, uh, in back then. Uh, and, which is the, the King James version, rather than a more contemporary sounding thing. But it's really stuck in my head. But I couldn't have told you what comes straight after in the same chapter. <clears throat> and, it's, and it's this parable um, where, where Jesus starts unpacking a little bit more about prayer. And, uh, and there's this picture of persistence someone knocking on the door and not giving up and that's the image that I chose to go for with the painting of Alec. We've got a regular practice of prayer in St George's Tron. On Sundays and Wednesdays there are prayer meetings in the church, the same days that there are church services and people get together and they pray. It's not flashy prayers, it's not fancy prayers, it's just consistent prayers. And people meet every week and they pray and they don't give up. Well, my name is Mae Smith and um, I've been part of this church from the beginning and have been coming along to the prayer group um, from the beginning. 
and um, I'm part of the leadership team here. There have been many instances um, to do with perhaps looking for guidance in areas of my own life where I've thought, where on earth do I go from here? Um, I haven't really known what the future has held, um, perhaps relating to uh, things to do with, with um, professional aspect of my life or perhaps to do with um, church involvements and it has been amazing the way I've been led down certain roads but it has taken a long long time just as an example if one can give an example um, I remember recently being 17 years um, in a rather strange interim situation um, before finally being led actually to come back to the church where I am now, right here. Um, but it took 17 years of knocking on doors and finding them closed um, and wondering why. And then quite amazingly, another door opening. When you're praying, you are definitely right in the forefront of the battle. You maybe don't think of it that way, but it is. You're right in the middle of a spiritual battle. And sometimes that makes focusing and concentrating and persevering difficult and you would be frequently tempted to give up and go and get a cup of tea or something. <laughs> but um, you need to just drag your thoughts back to what you're supposed to be doing. I would say, well, in the first instance, keep it simple because after all, you're speaking to your Heavenly Father you're speaking to the Lord who made you and knows you through and through and you have to remind yourself that the very hairs of your head are all numbered and he knows where you're at, he knows you're down sitting and you're up rising um, and if you're struggling with things he knows you're struggling with them. So keep it simple I think would be my first thought. As we tune in to um, his wisdom and his knowledge and his resources and so on. Um, the situations and the people we are praying for come into the right focus. The more we keep at it, um, the more he'll realize that, that we are really serious about what we're asking for. If you just give up the first time round, um, well, yes, he did here, but, you know, how desperate are you for whatever the cause is or whatever the, whoever the person is that you're um, concerned for? It requires stickability. It requires a degree of determination. And if you want something enough, whether it's something personal or another person's concerns or whether it's to do with church, um, sometimes you just have to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. And it's wonderful when um, eventually um, a door is opened and you have sometimes thought, goodness me, um, this prayer is never going to be answered but you keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and then all of a sudden things just fall into place in a way that you wouldn't have imagined and sometimes it just takes that amount of time for I think it must just be that you show God that you really are serious about this.